Okay, so in this video, we are going to go through spellings effectively. Uh, so I'm going to explain what the spelling test is going to be like for you. I'm going to explain the fundamental basics of how we actually learn spellings. And I'm going to also demonstrate some of the different ways of learning spellings that are available. So, for the spelling test, you'll be given 10 words to spell. You do not know these words before you're given the test. You're not given a list of words for the spelling test. These are words that are chosen out of a long list of potential words that they would expect you to spell at your level. So what would happen is the assessor is going to read the words out one by one. And they'll also give you a sentence that includes the word. They will then repeat the word back again. At any time, you can ask the assessor to sort of clarify something, to repeat something, uh, if you didn't quite catch it, or to slow down. Okay. So, for instance, if uh, the first word on your list here is business, the assessor would say, word one, business. As in, I have an important business meeting. Business. You only need to write down that word. You don't need to write down the full sentence. So fundamentally, how we remember spellings is like this. So in your mind, you've got two different types of memory. You've got short-term memory and long-term memory. Um, it's an idea to think about this as, oh, I don't know, um, the kitchen side. So the stuff you immediately know is on your kitchen side, but the longer term stuff that you don't need right away might be packed into the cupboard underneath that kitchen side. So the short term stuff is easy to access, but there's not as much space for it. The long term stuff, a lot more space for, but it might be a bit difficult to get it out of long term. So short term memory, you can hold about seven things in your short term memory for about 20 minutes or so. And it's quite easy to get that information out of it. Uh, so, for instance, you might, if you've got three things to pick up from the shop, you might not bother writing a list. You might just remember it in your short term memory till you get to the shop. Long term memory holds a lot more, but it can be hard to get information out of long term memory once it's in there. And spellings are an example of this. Now, the best way to remember spelling is all about getting the spelling out of your long term memory as easily as possible. And a lot of that hinges on attaching as many things to that word as you can learning in different ways and i'm going to go through a few of these now now covering writing and checking the traditional way that is taught at school and that is where you have your list of spellings you try and remember you cover up the spelling and then you write them down best you can and then you double check and you keep doing that until it sticks Unfortunately, that doesn't work for everyone here, especially doesn't work for people with things like dyslexia um, or other sort of like neurodivergent conditions. Um, so here are some potential alternatives. So number one is to somehow connect it to something important to you. Now, I struggled myself quite a while uh, with spelling success. And then I started to connect it to a uh, snake plant, which is one of the first plants I've actually successfully managed to keep alive for any length of time. And that worked quite nicely for me. I even did a little sketch of the snake plant because I'm quite a visual person. Uh, I quite like sketching. So I did a little sketch of the snake plant with success written on the pot. And that helped me remember. Uh, another way of helping you remember bit is sort of breaking it down into the bits of the word or coming up with some sort of saying or some sort of thing attached to it, some sort of trigger for your memory. Uh, you can also potentially use it in writing. Or you can look up the meaning for yourself and rewrite the definition. OK, so if you use it in writing, for instance, what you might do is have your list of spellings. And then you try and come up with, say, a paragraph using all of those spellings. And you'd be remembering that paragraph, not necessarily the spelling itself, but you'd be remembering the paragraph. The more times you read that paragraph, the more likely it is to sink in because you're adding more hooks to that spelling. You're adding more ways of getting it out of long term memory. Connecting it to something important to you is a good idea as well, because again, you're engaging part of your memory you don't usually use when it comes to spelling. 
and that can be quite a nice little world around, especially if you uh, have a selective, for instance, and you know, often struggle with that sort of thing. Looking up the meaning for yourself essentially involves having that list of spelling, looking them up in the dictionary, and then when you get a little definition, rewriting that definition in your own words. And that can be quite useful because what you're doing is you're engaging with that word and that spelling. Uh, I'll give you an example of some monomics here. So, for instance, I've got here business. The way I remember this is bus in Ness. So I come up with a little event in my head, a little town called Ness, and I need to get a bus, first part of the word, in, second part of the word, Ness. I uh, know there's a little bit of crossover there, but it does sort of work for me anyway. It doesn't work for everyone. Uh, necessary, one way to remember this is one collar, see, two sleeves, X. Because that was that tends to be what puts people up, you know, whether it's two C's or two S's. So remember one collar on a shirt, two sleeves on a shirt. There, there, and there. And these are examples of what's called homophones, as in words that sound the same, but they're spelled differently. So first off, first of all, is to expand the apostrophe L if there is one. And if not, cover up the two. So there, here, P H E Y apostrophe R E stands for they are. There is in T H E R E. Cover up the T. We're left with here. Now, there, when we use the word there, T H E R E, we're always talking about a place. So, where is it? It's over there. Well, here is another way of talking about a place or a location. So, it's quite a handy way of remembering. There is in T H E I R. If we cover up the T, we're left with air. The H and that is silent. Now, air refers to inheritance. So, for instance, when somebody dies, you might be an heir to the estate. You know, you inherit it, you get that estate. Or if the king or the queen dies, then the next thing mind from the throne is the heir to the throne. So it's about ownership, it's about possession, having something. And there, spelled T-H-E-I-R, is about ownership, as in that's their fence, that's their cat. So there we go. There's some potential ways of learning some spellings, and I'll be attaching a little sheet going over this with this video.